Hi, viewers. <laughs> I'm just excited Enjoying because I'm among my friends today. <laughs> we, are, we'll be, we, we are gathered to uh, do justice to this uh, issue that is like uh, ravaging the lives of uh, the migrants in the diaspora. So it has to do with uh, a healthy lifestyle. And today we have uh, the leaders of the community. They are here to at least give us their own intake their own perspective regarding to having a healthy lifestyle. As you can agree with us, we've brought so many doctors and so many professionals uh, on this very issue, but we have not really heard from the perspective of uh, the, the migrant leaders. So because of that, we have brought them from different countries and they are living here in the Netherlands to tell us what they know about healthy lifestyle and what they want to do towards helping the people they are leading to acquiring a healthy lifestyle. As you know, it's very, very scary what is happening among the migrants because of overweight and obesity. Uh, people are having these heavy, heavy sicknesses like uh, 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 high blood pressure, stroke, and uh, and the sudden death. So the, 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 the EU as a whole are really uh, much eager to to invest in this area to finding a solution to why people uh, are having so much of overweight and uh, and this diseases so today uh, we will be focusing uh, on some of the questions like uh, what are the uh, known issues causing obesity and is related ill health and how can we help to educate fellow migrants on the importance to change so on this panel today these are the leaders in the city, and these are the leaders in the community, uh, both male and female of them. They are here to let us know how we can help those uh, we are leading to acquiring healthy lifestyle. Permit me to give them the chance to introduce uh, <coughs> themselves one by one and also uh, for, uh, from where they are coming. So from uh, do we start from the main? Can we start from the rear? We um, have ladies. the president of uh, the, the president of the Nigerian National Association here in the Netherlands by uh, the name of Mr. Ayo. Mr. Ayo, please. Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Ayo Deji Okele uh, from Nigeria. Yes, he's from Nigeria. So if you are uh, a Nigerian national and you have not identified with this man, you're wasting time. So make sure you identify with this association. We also have uh, uh, Pastor Kwesi Gay. Pastor, he is, uh, as, as, he is actually a guru in the media. <laughs> this man is a guru in the media. Uh, he has uh, finished preaching today and uh, I think he is so tired all the way from Eindhoven, but he still made effort to be here. Pastor Kwesi Gay, we love you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Kwesin K. I'm a Ghanaian. Thank you. Right. Mr. Okay. Uh, Yogan is yeah. as well, uh, a Jogu God, uh, Godian is as well uh, from Nigeria and uh, uh, a renowned leader in the diaspora. Please, can you talk to us? Yeah, my name is Godian Ejogu uh, from Nigeria. You are act actually the founder of the uh, migrant. Uh, you set it up, isn't it? Yeah, yes, I set a lot of organizations up. A lot. A lot. So <laughs> one of them is Migrant Mother and Child. Yes. Uh, especially for single uh, African women mm -hmm. with uh, young children mm -hmm. who are living in isolation and poverty. Yes, exactly. To bring them into contact and network that we have them and their children to participate in the society. Awesome. You are doing a great job, man of God. God bless you. Nice All right. You. Uh, our next uh, is our friend. He's a French-speaking uh, uh, friend, and we've known him for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Jean Roasikor. Uh, my name is Jean Roasikor, and not Jean. I speak French. <laughs> <laughs> I come from, uh, I come from uh, Rwanda. Yes. Thank you, sir, for being with Thank us. You, for sure. <laughs> and also, Mr. Ibrahim, Mr. Mohammed, uh, Mohammed Abdil. Mr. Um, Abdel, please, welcome to Majesty TV. My name is Mohammed Abdi. I'm from Somalia. Thank you for being here. We have Pastor Ago. And my name is Pastor Francis Ago from Nigeria. Thank you, sir, for being with us. And we have our own uh, Secretary General of uh, Nigerian Nationals uh, Association here in the Netherlands, all the way from Den Haag, 
she is here as, as a matter of fact she is as well pursuing her doctorate degree and she has also her own company uh, uh lady introduce yourself yeah good evening viewers my name is uh, chief mrs evelyn Azi. yes uh, as she said i'm the secretary general of uh, nigerian national association in the netherlands i'm an accountant by profession yes yeah we run uh, a consulting firm yes. in the hague yes uh, educational consulting uh, firm where yes. we help uh, African youth to get uh, admission and scholarship here in the Netherlands. It's true, Thank baby. You. God bless you. We are privileged to have you. We have uh, our own dickness, Caroline Ayub. Miss Caroline, please. Welcome. Yes, my name is Caroline B. Ayuk. I'm from Cameroon and yes. uh, actually own my own business in Amsterdam and uh, train uh, foreign exchange traders. Yes, it's true. It's true. Welcome. Welcome so much. We have Dr. Mugisha uh, 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 among us today. She is also my personal friend and uh, uh, she is doing something great in the, in the Netherlands and she has also her own uh, NGO. Doctor, please. My name is Dr. Molin Mugisha. I come from Uganda. I'm a teacher, a businesswoman, a mother, and I'm also an upcoming author about nutrition in the migrant communities globally. And uh, you are busy with your book? Yes, I'm busy with that book on nutrition. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome so much. And uh, the last but not the least is uh, also my own friend, uh, Miss Susanna Aka, who also have uh, an NGO. Susanna, please. My name is Susanna Aka, and I, I'm from Ghana, and I have uh, my own NGO, it's called Date Foundation which means diversity, integration, and development. Awesome. So. Well, you can see that uh, all of our, our uh, panelists today, they are really seasoned men and women, people of integrity, and I think they've got a lot to give to uh, us. So let's just hear them out and know their perspective regarding to healthy lifestyle. So. Uh, the ball rolls on. Please feel free to give us a call on 020 This is coming to you live from Majestic Christian Television Network, the channel of your choice. Now, the first question goes, uh, uh, are you aware of the, of the health scares currently affecting large uh, numbers of uh, migrants in the country? And uh, what is your intake about it? Can we start? Yeah, sure. Um, personally, I'm aware of it, and also uh, I have also personal experience on that. Um, the issue of uh, our health problem as migrants, um, not only on the physical side of it, but also spiritual, and also um, the w one of the main causes are. Uh, I think it's poverty is one of the main causes, oh. um, which is uh, something that uh, most of the migrants are facing. Uh, second, uh, I think uh, from my experience I have and I know, uh, thinking from Dutch experience is the lack of knowledge of uh, how the society here works. Um, you know, they have this four season and each season have its own fruit or its own food its own you know production and uh, this uh, the nature have something to provide to nurture the the human being mm -hmm. but lack of knowledge of what people eat at a certain time mm -hmm. made our people often to eat what they know mm -hmm. so they eat one food uh, in winter in the summer in the spring, in the autumn, they keep on eating the same food. So a lot of things okay. are causes of it. All right. Yeah. So please feel free to contribute anybody. And those of you in front, you can always use this phone. You can always speak, then it will pick it up. Okay, definitely. Um, it's a big problem. The health challenges in the immigrant community is largely dependent on um, the lifestyle that we live as immigrants yes. and uh, the nutrition. Um, we are unable to uh, balance the foods that we eat because when we come from our own homes and come to Netherlands or to any other country for that matter, the kind of food that we have access to changes. 
that most of our African uh, foods have been arranged like what you put on the table is already balanced depending on the culture where you come from so you always have a food you always have a sauce mixed with some vegetables and some fruits and when we come to Netherlands we experience completely different things and coupled with our beliefs of what people know to be food. So whereas a Dutch man sees bread as food, we are not seeing bread as food. So a part of the challenge is that you, you are struggling to find the right food, and then you are also struggling to kind of structure your life, your lifestyle, to include um, the habits that would uh, make preparation of your food and the body using your food like exercise to incorporate it all, the life becomes so busy. So when the stress comes in, you can't find the right food and your life is a little bit less structured than it would have been. Mm -hmm. You find that uh, diseases that are related to food like uh, diabetes, even overweight, uh, all are much more common in us immigrant communities. And also coupled with our habits, you know, the way we eat, as I, as I say, the structure of our life is different from our, our hosts here in the Netherlands. So we eat our dinners later, and so you find that uh, we, we don't use the food that we eat, and we all accumulate it in our bodies. So all those, it's really looking at it from all different angles mm -hmm. to see how we can really restructure our lifestyle to suit the country in which we live so that we can be healthy as well. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Yes, Mel, from that side, yeah. Yeah, um, I think uh, food uh, is uh, food gives us uh, energy, uh, gives the body energy, and uh, it's part of our tradition and our culture. So, but what matters is having a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And how do we have a healthy lifestyle by knowing the quantity of food we take? Okay, it matters a lot. Knowing the time we take the food and also knowing how to uh, balance it having uh, the the fruits the uh, ve uh, vegetables the, uh, that is the vitamin including it in what we eat because uh, like uh, how we are in the Netherlands and uh, you go to shops you see candies you see, see sweets and most people because of the lifestyle here they think uh, is beneficial to eat such foods but when you, you 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 know what you're doing you should include things like fruits fruits in what you eat especially as deserts and vegetables that is very very important and uh, like uh, having a good uh, uh, pattern of eating mm -hmm. yeah like when you if breakfast is mm -hmm. very very important but ironically most people uh, 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 they don't eat breakfast but breakfast they, there's a saying that said uh, says uh, uh, eat breakfast like a king mm -hmm. eat uh, your lunch like a prince and your dinner like a papa you don't have to eat heavy mm. in the evening. Okay. Yeah, when you want to eat uh, in the afternoon, you make sure you mix it. You can equally keep a journal, a food journal. At least monitor your pattern of eating, what you eat, especially what makes you eat. Because when you are bored, yeah. when you're tired, yeah. when you're stressed, yeah. I think you eat more. But if you keep the, uh, uh, you, you monitor what you eat and at the time you eat it, at least you will be able to control yourself. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chief Mrs. Thank you, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. So are we now saying, are we are we saying, because we've heard from four panelists, are we saying that food is the major uh, problem that we have, that is, that is uh, uh, making us not to have a healthy lifestyle? When we talk about healthy lifestyle, is it just only about food? No. no, no. Yeah, no, then. I think, no, I think food, food no, is... Uh, it, it's a big part. Yeah, uh, food, food. Yeah, food is a food is a big part of it, but I think it's it's only like one part, because you also have uh, the idea of uh, exercise, being out exercise. and about, and uh, basically, if, I mean, food is all about uh, yeah, calories and uh, vitamins, and uh, even back home, I mean, uh, very few people have an idea of the calorific value of uh, the food that we eat. Over here, it's kind of different. You go to most, if you go to supermarkets, for example, everything you buy in supermarkets is labeled how many calories, how much protein, how much fat, what have you. But a lot of the foods that we eat, because we, we do like you know to eat 
the foods that we are used to from like uh, back home. And uh, a lot of us uh, don't have any idea of what the calorific values of like uh, different uh, foods are. Mm -hmm. So we can consume, you know, different things in like so uh, quantities. So please use the microphone, yeah, yeah, so that we in, can pick it up. Yeah, in quantities that, uh, yeah, that can cause us uh, different uh, issues. Mm -hmm. And apart from food, there's also the idea of like uh, exercise. Okay. I mean, exercise doesn't necessarily mean like, going to the gym or like, what have you. It might just be uh, like walk around the block. Okay. Taking the staircase uh, instead of the lift. Yeah. Just something, you know, to keep your heart, uh, you know, working. Mm -hmm. And uh, to keep your, like, uh, muscles also, like, uh, working. Yeah. So I think this is... Uh, and people need to be made aware of the benefits of exercise. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, there should probably be, like, uh, special programs. Because some people may not actually watch... Uh, normal like uh, dutch like tv where some of these things are, are discussed uh, regularly yeah mm. so when we have like programs in the uh, community we need to make a special effort to highlight these things uh, to like people in a very easy manner mm -hmm. so mm. i think that's uh, thank you so much well. thank you so nice so uh, <laughs> yes um well, yeah possible to speak well um i think Basically, everybody here is saying the same thing, mm -hmm. but uh, I have a different opinion on this uh, issue okay. because uh, I think our community is getting confused every day in the sense that uh, the medical practitioners, you don't know which is which and whom to trust. Yeah. And they keep confusing us. Mm -hmm. At one point, they will tell you, um, it doesn't matter the kind of food you eat. Yes. But the quantum, the quantity. Yes. And also, um, at certain point, they will tell you, at certain age in life, there's n no need for you to go to the gym to do exercise, because that thing would rather kill you. Oh. Oh yes. <laughs> because you see, as a journalist, yeah, I have hosted so many programs on this particular topic, and I get different opinions from people, especially the specialists. Yeah, they all come with different theories, but I think God, who who created man, has his own health plan for man. Mm -hmm. It's like a um, automobile manufacturer. If you buy a new car, there's a manual that tells you what to do with the car. Because they know the, the car better than you, the driver. So God, who created us, I think he has his own plan in in the Bible. Because he says in 3 John, 3 John 1, 2, he says that he wish your, your soul prosper and all that and be in good health. That yeah. means he has a plan, a plan laid aside for us to follow. If you only follow that principle, it will be easier for us. Because tomorrow, eat this tomorrow don't eat it tomorrow this is okay but mm -hmm. it depends on the time and, and the quantum and all that it gets some of us control but Confused. pastor the yes. fact the fact is that the uh, you we cannot ignore the health crisis that is going on now the the, the increase in obesity and the diabetes and high blood pressure and the strokes among the migrant community as a matter of fact they are they are, they are uh, recent research findings and uh, even on friday we were watching a um, uh, was it on Friday? Yeah, or, or, or on Monday, we were watching a, a chat by a doctor uh, when he was speaking to the pastors in the city. So we saw that out of 17 migrants, you will find that about 10 out of 17, 10 or 11, they, are, they have all of these sicknesses. And then among the white people, you find only one. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I okay. think the thing about the confusion in the in the information that people get is that generally as and most people don't like it when I say this but generally as African immigrants or Africans even those who are back home we are not very good at processing information and we are also not very good at looking for information in the right sources so I always make a joke of somebody who is sick and has a stomach pain and goes to ask the neighbor, what can I use? And the neighbor says, mix this and this and this and it will work. And they try. And by the time they come to the doctor, they've tried like a thousand different things that haven't worked. So obviously, not every health or nutrition information 
is useful in the same way for everyone. If I'm diabetic, an example, generally most people believe that if you want to take less sugar, take the sugar from honey, not the sugar from, from the, the, the shop, ones. the refined one. And that is true. But if I am diabetic, I want to avoid sugar of all sorts, and honey is, is also sugar. Exactly. So if you take it at face value that, oh, honey is better than sugar, yes, to some extent that's true, but for your particular case, what actually applies to you? If I'm trying to lose weight, if I'm trying to, if I'm diabetic, I need to cut out both of them anyway. Mm. So information, there is a lot of information out there. And not all of it is applying the same for everyone. So we as Africans have to find, uh, to, to understand how to process information and make it useful for ourselves. That's why there is a lot of confusion because all exercise, some exercises will not be good for certain people. Exactly. So if you have a heart problem and uh, you are going to go running up and down the hill, that will probably kill you. Exactly. <laughs> so what I'm saying here. Exactly. So <laughs> rather than be confused, find out for my health state, age, sex, and job, what is my diet? The okay. diet that would help me. Mm. Because every information is good. It just depends on who you are and well, what your body Well, this is not needs. just an information. I think this is a research, and it has been proved that uh, a lot of the migrant community, a lot of uh, the migrants are dying, and then yes. they are dying out of all of this. So that is they are true. looking for a way to reach out to us, mm -hmm. and they are looking for a way to see how we can at least live longer. I don't think there's mm -hmm. anything wrong in us adopting a healthier lifestyle that yes. will make us live longer than just dying at this at the at the at the uh or pace that yes. people are dying. Yeah. You, 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 you just said uh, they are looking for a way to help us but if you are looking for a way and you put it in the paper how can we find it we don't read and then uh, if you, yeah <laughs> exactly. we don't read That's if you put fact. it and if you, like some of us they don't speak dutch if you put it in a dutch advert they, they just wait for the bus at the bus stop and go they don't they see only picture so you know it's very complex situation and how to how to educate our community is also another way because we are from i'm from ghana ghana if i don't eat fufu a day i haven't eaten anything so it's very difficult to educate us and to our mindset we have a mindset that needs to be changed yeah you know the mindset is the problem yeah. because uh, me from ghana if i don't eat fufu i haven't eaten anything ah the whole day haven't eaten what? Because I've been eating fufu. So <laughs> it's, it's very, and all like Nigerians, maybe if they don't eat a bar a day, oh, today I haven't eaten anything. So, so it's, 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 yeah. <laughs> it, for some years back, I was very fat. Now, if you see me, I look small, but I wasn't like this before. I went to Weight Watchers and they were telling me eat this, eat vegetables this time, this time. And at the point of time, I said, why do I have to struggle with food like this? I just ignore it. Actually, it was helping me, but my mindset is telling me if I eat apple, I haven't eaten anything. <laughs> you know, so we have a problem of how we set our mindset. The education has to go to the setting of our minds. We have something in okay. that eating apple is nothing, but it helps. So, the Hello. technology about eating as well, which is a very important yeah. Yes. Yeah. Dr. Mugisha, were you, are you saying, I suggest we should ignore or not take seriously the information in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the public about, uh, you know, what's going on. I'm saying yeah, to avoid the I'm saying to avoid the confusion. Yeah. We should um, information about food and lifestyle and exercise. We should really make it probably our biggest job as individuals to find what particular habits, what particular foods of all that is out there. It, does my body need, does my lifestyle support that would actually lead me to good health? Okay. So everybody yeah. needs to find that out for themselves. Mm. And uh, for us mothers, we have the task of feeding the family. Mm -hmm. So I have found out 
uh, well, I knew that already, but trying to put it in practice, that the way we cook our food as Africans, we cook our vegetables so much until there is nothing left. <laughs> and yet my, my dear husband, if I put f raw vegetables on the table, he will tell me, but this is not cooked. Yeah. So yeah. my role is to try and steer my family's eating habits to a healthier way. So I will not straight away put the raw at the table, but I will make it less and less cooked and keep repeating that this is because this is healthier for us. And actually, it's been maybe over a year. Now I actually put it raw and he eats it. And okay. so it's, it's changing the way we look at food. Mm -hmm. And we as women have a big role to make sure that we put the right food at the table. And our husbands have also to begin to be flexible. But we have to tell them why we are doing this. Okay. Otherwise, they say, now you think I've become Dutch, you feed me raw things. Okay, yes, Hello. Let's hear from uh, them. You know, Bible says lack of knowledge, people perish. At times, our health is not being checked. Some people don't like to go to to doctor for checkup. Yes. Yeah. They are there. Some died as a result of that without knowing that they are carrying their blood pressure sickness or blood sugar sickness. And at times I go to hospitals to pray. I say, ah, what, what happened? You just came to hospital. I say, I don't know. I just fall. They call the ambulance because they don't used to go to checkup. They have the house doctors there. And when you are going to check up, they have the means of going it. They have papers. They can come. They, they are busy all the time doing nothing. They don't regard life as important. So at times you see them just fell, just get short sickness, and then the ambulance will come. As some died because the, the sickness is too much for them to carry. So we need to go to our house doctors, take our intervals at monthly or weekly for checkup. At times, I'm a man of God. I go to hospital. I still, I go to what? To hospital, to my house doctor for checkup. He will check, oh, your blood pressure is good. This okay. is good, but this is not good. Don't eat too much. Your weight is too high. Okay. So reduce your food. So I know where. I say, thank you, God. So we have to. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, Let me hear from. Uh, uh, can I say something? Yeah, yeah can, can I, can I say yeah. something? Uh, Please, uh, the pastor just said uh, we don't go to a house doctor. As I was saying, the knowledge is also another problem. The, we have we Ghanaians. I'm a Ghanaian. Some of us have the have something in our mind that I don't want to pay. I have risk, so I don't go. That is why. The doctor said, you go to your neighbor. Before they get to the hospital, they've gone to about five or six neighbors because she, they don't want to pay the eye risk. You know, so that is also, it's affecting a lot of us. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big issue in the community. Some people don't want to pay the eye risk, so they don't go to the hospital. Yeah, they don't go. So what do they do when they are sick? Yeah, they go to their neighbors. They have no choice. <laughs> they, they go to their neighbor. Do you have something... Uh, she was, she just said it. Do you have paracetamol? <laughs> yeah. So be, yeah. Yes. I can't believe the, this. Yes. Now you you hear that there are so many things going on, see, and the, the, that goes to this the, may happen maybe between one or two people in the community. Okay, and we will not uh, sit here and, and, and generalize. You see, yeah. uh, it's as as it's as my pastor friend yeah. said that uh, some of them are doing nothing and they don't go and check and all that. Yeah, I, I disagree totally with that. Speak. The ordinary Ghanaian is a very busy, busy, busy person. Because he wake up early in the morning and go and look mm -hmm. for his daily bread. Yes. Some of them have to struggle through the day. So their lifestyle is a bit challenging. See, they will not get the solid food that will make their body uh, healthy enough. Hmm. The breakfast, for instance, you just pack bread and so and the, few and white margarine bread, and all white, that. White bread. And rush to the bus stop, white take the bread. bus, go to work, lunch, the same thing when he or she comes home late in the evening. Yeah. That is where she thinks, I have my solid food I have to eat. Mm -hmm. And that solid food is what is bringing us the problem. Yeah. Because uh, the, 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 the content, the time, see, the mm -hmm. time in which we time take frame. that solid food probably should be in the morning or in the afternoon. Yeah. When we eat our fufu, we don't care. Exactly. Uh, because I am hungry. I've worked eight hours, 12 hours, and I'm home now. So I need something solid for my body. Because if I don't get something solid for my body, I cannot wake up the next day to work. So somebody made mention of poverty. Yes, I that's, think yes. it's one big factor. It is, it is. if you have flexible job, yeah. 
and you have flexible income, yeah. you will not kill yourself at all. And, 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 and get up early in the morning and chase the food. Yes. Uh, see, the, the Bible says some of us will wake up early in the morning and mm, eat the, the bread, bread of, of sorrow. sorrow. Yeah, see, exactly. While even eating, you are sleeping. Yes, well, exactly. Yes. I think that health is Thank very you, Pastor. Yeah. Health is very important for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, here in the Netherlands, you can eat what you want, you can drink what you want, but in Africa, because of poverty, mm. it's too difficult. It's very important for our community to change their behavior. If they don't change, then we get the same problem. Yeah. That is, it's, yeah. it's important to give them information, correct information. Correct. And what, what, are, what, are, what are we talking about? We are talking about healthy. And health, you have many dimensions. Yes. It's not only physical, physical, physical dimension. Yeah. yeah. Food. It's 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 not it's only social, yeah. social yeah. dimension. Yeah. But you have also to talk about intellectual, intellectual, uh, intellectual healthy. Yes. Emotional, intellectual healthy. We have to go to school, for example. Mm. Emotional healthy. Uh, yeah, planet healthy environment is very important and you have also to talk about spiritual spiritual uh, spiritual health when you are going to uh, to to the church then uh, it's it's healthy it's healthy mm -hmm. it's important to give us to give our community info, info information and then to change our behavior exactly possible. exactly mm -hmm. thank yeah. you sir thank so you, sir. so what we are saying How do we do it? It? yeah what we are saying just like what we are doing now mm -hmm. just discussing it but what we are trying to say here is, it's like uh, food has come to focus, mm -hmm. and the time yeah. we eat it has come to focus, mm -hmm. and then poverty it has come also come to, come to focus, um, and the lack of exercise yeah. have also come to focus. But we've not made mention of lack of sleep. I want to discuss yeah. the issue of poverty. Yeah. So are we saying, so we are playing poverty in Africa, and we are here, we are still living in poverty? Of yes. course! Yes. Um, yeah. 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 There are Dutch people who are doing some of the jobs that we are doing. Why are they not... You know, having this kind of let, me uh, let, let me answer that. Let me answer that. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Look, we have all the food here. We yeah. can choose what we, I mean, yeah, food is affordable. No. At the supermarket. Are, the, 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 are you not training this community? People the, kill for food. The, wait. For free the, food. People kill for free food. At the food bank. Yes. At the food bank. Yes. You yes. see. No, they no, don't no. kill. Even no, no. The they, bank, they struggle. They have they surplus. Kill, oh, yeah, they kill. They kill for food because they can't afford it. That is poverty. Um, but, I will, that's what we're standing. We still can afford these sand meals. Let, yeah, let, but, let but, me come to that. Yeah, and, uh, but, but um, it's not only about, excuse me, I'm moderating, please. Uh, it's not just solely about uh, the food and, uh, and, uh, and um, the poverty. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you are saying, you are making mention of our counterparts, yeah, the citizens or the indigents yes. and, mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the migrant, uh, in the, uh, the, uh, the Africans in the diaspora. Yeah. Okay, but the problems we have at home, they don't have it. Mm. We have so many problems that have stressed us up that even when people bring out yeah. the food, they can't eat it because of stress. When you see that you can afford chicken and your parents are in Africa, they cannot afford chicken. Mm. And then you need to divide your salary to send the money to them. You exactly. see? So the white people don't have any person they are sending their money to. As a matter of fact, they are promoting healthy lifestyle because they, they, don't, they don't have um, extended uh, family system, which we have. Yeah. So an African that is here can afford to eat three square meal a day. But as he or she is eating, but he's also thinking about the family. You know, your brothers and sisters who have no school fees to pay, uh, who, who have no rent, and they are shelterless. So yeah, you are looking for a way to, to take care of them. So no, stress the, is one that, of the things. That's a very good point. The if, stress. I, if, I may, if I may just add one more point, I'm sorry I'm getting involved. Somebody said maybe if you want to have a healthy lifestyle, you need to become a bit selfish. Because yes. yeah. you need to, some. I mean, Sure, you do a little bit in order to, 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 to keep yourself alive. Yeah, I mean, I it's true you, we send I money think, and all that. I but you, Apostle, can you be selfish I enough to do this? <laughs> 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 yeah. Considering yeah. your background yeah. as a Christian yeah. and as a preacher, Actually, man, uh, and you see somebody uh, in deep no, no, no. poverty well, you have, and you have the money, you, no, you being, can you be that selfish? Stay alive, how can you help but, let, let, me, let me tell you, it's very difficult. Let me come in, please. It's a. It's a complex issue, uh, may looking from African perspective. Yeah. Yes. 
uh, because myself, I, I lived uh, 23 years here with the Dutch people in the monastery, in the convent, in, yeah. in different places. So it is when I know that in the summer, they eat different food in the shop, if you really look well. Yeah, it's true. In the winter, they have different ones, and they buy those ones because it is winter production, <laughs> winter vegetables, and they buy especially because it contains vitamins that is meant for you to survive the winter. Okay. You know, so uh, those, those things... No, I don't need to, to go in detail, but um, the, 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 those... Let me make some points. Let me make. Let me make some points on on the the way of the lifestyle of Dutch people and the lifestyle of Africans. Yes. Um, uh, if you go to shop uh, to buy, for example, a foam, you know, for your bed, mm. you see the ones of hundred euro, fifty euro. You see the ones of five thousand euro, and if you think about it, you spend. Mm, uh, out of 24 hours, you spend minimum of 8 hours on your bed. And why should you buy the one of 50 euro? Poverty. Okay. It's not poverty only, but it's lack of knowledge what the form means to your body. Uh, you know, it carries... Let, it. Let, let, me, let, let, me, let me... Let me... Let me come... Let me, let, let me give you a few points more. So, the bed is something. The, the time of sleeping is something you consider. 8 hours minimum. A day you sleep, and eating late in the evening is also not good for your body. Yeah. Your body is supposed to relax from eight o'clock in the evening. If you overload it with food, it will work the whole night. In the morning, you are tired and you, you have been exhausted, and your lifespan reduced. Yeah. Um, the issue of realization: I don't see Africans take a walk in exactly. the park or in yes. the in the bush mm -hmm. or in the in, in the in the beach. So uh, in Africa, all the food we have, even our banana, is extremely rich mm. in vitamins because of the sun. Mm -hmm. You can eat uh, two kilo of uh, gare and sit down the whole day in the market, and nothing happens to your body. <laughs> but try it here; your whole body will be damaged. And like, and there we get our vitamin D from the sun. Here we sit inside all often. We don't go and chase the sun. And we don't take our vitamin uh, D tablets, and that uh, the whole organ starts, uh, you know, damaging. Vitamin D is extremely important for black people because we don't get much sun. I used to test it every twice a year to see the level of my vitamin D. Mm -hmm. it's, and I didn't know about it. Is a uh, um, a Dutch doctor who worked in Africa. All right. So thank you, doc. Thank you, thank you. So the, let, let there are a lot of things yes, you can we'll mention. Come again. On yes, exactly. Issue. I want uh, her to speak. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, say that it's not just poverty because uh, when you uh, you look at our lifestyles, especially in Africa, we we eat better food. We eat we eat natural uh, vegetables, not on, unlike here where they grow. Uh, vegetables, they grow tomato under a week. It's not like that. And when mm. you eat that tomato that is grown here mm. and, and, and the one that is grown from Africa, mm -hmm. you see the difference. And uh, I think uh, what, what I will uh, attribute it to is a lack of knowledge, as you said. And it's uh, left for us uh, African uh, leaders, Af uh, yes. leaders of African communities in the Netherlands to create awareness. Yes. To create awareness uh, in our uh, associations. Uh, in our town unions, uh, if we can have uh, in, in incorporate that in our program, having a, a, a like a seminar or a training uh, just to uh, bring people who are experts, who are uh, experts yes. in that field, yes. to let people know what they can eat and at what particular time and the quantity. Mm -hmm. Because when you develop the habit of eating small, honestly, when you do it for a week, you get used to it. And when you get used to it, it's better for your body. Mm -hmm. Especially taking water. Water yes. is very important. People, when you tell them that they should be taking enough water, some people will tell you that they take water. But just taking a glass of water a day is not enough. You have to take enough quantity of water in order to flush out your system. And uh, we don't uh, use our bicycles. It's quite unfortunate that in this uh, community uh, we are here, we look at the whites, they take their bicycle, they, 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 they move with it. But uh, in uh, the Our Africans, mindset, we the think Africans, it's poverty. If you don't have a car, 
a very big car, you are being looked down on. But you don't know that when you, you use your bicycle often, you, you, you are heard there. And uh, I think uh, we should uh, let our people know yes. the importance of uh, making use of that and sleeping early, mm -hmm. no matter what, no matter the program you have. Once it's uh, uh, 10 o'clock, make sure you go to bed. I am a consultant. At times I stay uh, uh, till 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. working. But yes. anytime I stay up to 2 a.m., I, I make sure I wake up 11. <laughs> I, that is what I do because if I sleep 2 a.m. and wake up at uh, 6 o'clock, I found out that uh, during the day, my body will not... Uh, well, you can't function yes, very well, yeah. Honestly, so all these are things we have to do. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hear maybe, from Maybe you. I, have, you. I have to add Thank something you. about myself. She, she, she talked about, uh, about the bicycle. When, when people ask me if, uh, if I use bicycle, uh, bicycle, what I said in my situation, I didn't come here in Europa to use bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> when you use, you have a car, yeah. you can use train. Why? I have to go to, bicycle. how I have to use a bicycle. The the important is to change our mentality, to change our behavior. If we don't, sh if, if we don't sh change, it will be difficult to achieve our goals. All right, let's yeah. hear from the Dickiness. Uh, uh, Dickiness, no. can no, you sorry. give us a little, excuse, yeah. No, the gentleman. Oh, sorry. The and and what she talked about is uh, about the, I want to add the, in the bicycle thing. I used in bicycle very often. Okay. And it's very be beneficial because, you know, your blood circulated. Because sometimes when I see in Dutch people who live in my area, they have all cars. But you see in the weekend or when the weather is good, they don't take the car. They take the bicycle. So that they they can have an exercise, they can uh, train their body. But we Africans we don't do because when you have a car, you always use the car. And also another factor here is the weather. Because we come from Africa, Africa we have in twelve hours we have the sun, and we have full of uh, vitamin D. But here you see the weather. During the day, the weather changed maybe 10 times. Now it's sun. After maybe one, uh, half an hour, maybe it might be raining. Mm -hmm. It might be snowing. You know, that also affects. plays uh, affects our body. Mm. Or also and uh, contributes to our uh, and, and lifestyle. Yeah. Because that also we have to, and as this gentleman said that in in the, the food we are eating mm -hmm. also depends on the weather. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is also important. We have to, not only that we should not look at the food that we eat, but we have to also uh, look at the weather. Mm. And All right. in the winter, mm. in, the, in the summer, it's, it's different. Yeah, but I, I, I think uh, they have also designed programs that we can do in the winter to keep us healthy. I also design programs we can do also in the summer to keep us healthy. <coughs> so what are you implying by us looking at the weather? Is it that the weather is going to reduce the content of the food we eat or what? No, the weather here is, is different from uh, in Africa. Mm -hmm. We know. And from this weather you get too much stress. Hmm. <laughs> and when you get stress you know that... It's stressful for the body. Yeah, it's not yeah. good for the body <laughs> and your, b your blood pressure r rises. Blood and when you have too much stress, maybe you might eat too much or... Poverty uh, brings stress. Yeah, <laughs> poverty also. <laughs> and also the b b poverty and also. You birth, you and, people tend yeah, yeah. and people tend to be less active, yeah. like in the winter. Yeah. So they stay indoors and they See, are when you are inactive. poor, nothing interests you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> See, when you are striking by poverty, this exercise, these food things, nothing interests you anymore. You don't have time to go on holidays. Your kids are there. And it, uh, you can't even take them to... To, 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 to yeah, a McDonald's or something. Yeah. The McDonald's is not healthy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, listen. Once a but, while. But yes, for yeah, a while, it's true, a child right? doesn't care whether it's McDonald's or uh, it's true, uh, like myself, I And, and one well. other thing we should understand. <laughs> these fast food are not meant for we, the old people. Mm. They are for the young ones who can jump 
any time in exactly. the day. Exactly. Like mm. cola, Fanta, it's the sugar content is just too much. Mm -hmm. And if you tell an ordinary uh, person, like, uh, let me use my own country because that's where I come from. When you tell an ordinary Ghanaian, the sugar content in Coca-Cola and Fanta is not good for your health. Uh -huh. Most especially the malt. Yeah, yeah. And oh, really? They will be arguing. You yeah. see, somebody was telling us that we should bring awareness. This program has been in the community over five years. We've been going from church to, to church, church, mosque to mosque, community to community, radio, television. Yes. We've been doing this for years. Yes. But the ordinary Ghanaian. His or her mentality is different from what you are, you are preaching. Mm -hmm. Because he's here to survive. He's here to make ends Money. meet. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, here we are. The money is not forthcoming. And you are coming to lecture him. It's like you going to preach to a poor person that God is good mm. and be blessed. And yeah. the person hasn't eaten for one week. He will not take your message. Okay, uh, pastor, 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 a practical way you are suggesting, because you've said this issue of poverty uh, on and on, uh, the practical way probably, or the, the message which you want to send to this uh, network is that um, something has to be done towards poverty. Exactly. Uh, so, so maybe, exactly. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe they have to increase the minimum wage for the migrants. Whether Perhaps. it's minimum wage <laughs> or <laughs> subsidy for the community to bring this awareness and things like that. Because but is that going to stop us from being troubled by our own home countries and our family members over there? Who, because we are carrying them in a major responsibility of training them, housing them, feeding them, and in addition to our own problems here. How about that? I've come to accept. So how are we going to re-educate our own people exactly. over there to stop putting unnecessary pressure on us so that we can live a little bit longer to be able to have them. They don't know. I've come to accept that uh, for us a big problem among us uh, immigrants, the bigger problem is not poverty of the pocket, but the, the poverty, poverty of, of the mind. mind. <laughs> yeah. yes. Because I, I, I have been to many communities, yeah. and no matter how uh, they want to change or they want to do something, we simply... Um, when you do a program, let's say a health program, all these things we are talking about of sleep early, eat, eat, eat early, eat vegetables and fruit, they have heard. The one thing that is lacking is that, first of all, when you give that whole list of the, the healthy things to do, they are looking at how not possible that what you're saying is, how difficult it is, how that is not applying to them, how hard it will be for them to get the money to afford what you're saying and That's all right. that. Well, and, uh, and for as long as we are focused on how not possible that is, we shall continue to see it as not possible. So even the people at home will continue demanding. They will mm. continue asking for school fees. They will continue to ask for rent as long as we keep doing Given. everything we can to satisfy their demands. Okay. And there Thanks. is nothing wrong with telling our people that, yes, you want money, but right now I don't have any. Hmm. So look for a way out somehow. Mm. Right now I don't have any. What is the big challenge is how much value we are putting on ourselves on, on keeping alive. Because the harder we work, I mean, the life expectancy of the Dutch is above 78. How many of us, if we continue the way we are, are going to live to be 70? Very few. So if we want to actually provide for them, we have to first and foremost focus on us, how we can actually be alive. And uh, as our apostle said, really, you have to be selfish. Okay. There let's, is no way about that. Let's just hear from, thank you, doctor. Let's hear from Dickness. Dickness, what we want to hear from you is uh, a, a, a practical perspective, like uh, what do you think uh, you can tell your people uh, regarding improving their lifestyle? Now, first of all, um, in terms of those back home, just tell the truth. If you don't have money, tell them you don't have money. It's as hmm. simple as that. Really? You cannot stress yourself out to, to the point where um, you can't take care of yourself. If I can't take care of myself, then I can't take care of anyone back home. So I have to be able to take care of myself and I tell the truth. This is my situation. I cannot afford it right now. If I can, I will help you. The people in Africa will survive. They always do. 
<laughs> and uh, secondly, <laughs> yeah, secondly, I think pro uh, for us to be very proactive in what we do. For example, um, my last two kids, the twins. Yeah. Um, one of uh, the Dutch friends was really very surprised. They went to her for a, a, a birthday or something like that. And she gave them candies, but my kids don't eat candies. So they said they wanted apple. So she was shocked and surprised. So when she came, she asked me what happened. How come I've never seen kids of six, seven years old who don't eat candies? Mm -hmm. I said, but they don't eat candies because yeah. I didn't introduce them to candies. Yes. It's as simple as okay. that. Interesting. I didn't introduce them to candies. I gave them lots of fruits. I put fruits everywhere in the house so they, they pick anything they want. You can eat as much fruits as you want. But fruits is everywhere in the house so that they can eat. And I think if you have to be proactive in your life, mm. um, all this information is out there. If I want to live a healthy lifestyle, I can find the information that I need. Mm. But the problem is information is one thing. In one hand, you have information. In the other hand, you have the practicality. Do you implement what you learn? It's just like school. I can mm. learn how to get out of debt. But if I don't implement it, it will never work. So you are saying in essence so that poverty is not playing a role because you can afford mm -hmm. the fruit you are eating and then your kids and can afford the fruit and the vegetable. What about those who do not have it? No, it, but, but that's, that's, that's just, just an assumption because so I, I, see people spend, I see people spend on chips. I see them spend on mobile on, on food, on, on things <laughs> that... In, yeah, I, could spell, I, could, I can that's equally true. spend the money that I use for apple and a, a, a kilo of apple is one euro or something. But uh, I think 300 grams of candies is, is more expensive. Mm -hmm. It is more expensive than, than the 1 euro 80, which, is, which costs a, uh, a kilo of apple. Mm -hmm. So as most people have said, I think it has to come to a place where individuals take the information and say, you know what, I want to live a healthy lifestyle. And, I, I, and well, to be candid to me, if I'm looking at the statistics out there right at this moment, it's not only in the migrant community. Mm -hmm. The health issue is a problem in America. It's a mm -hmm. problem with the with the with the white America, mm -hmm. with the white Dutch. Even in Africa, obesity mm -hmm. is in, is increasing everywhere. Even Not in only the migrant community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe there's a focus Africa, in the anyway. migrant community right now because okay, the migrants one die here, two die there, and then they draw these conclusions and the rest of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But I don't think if you look at health wise, mm -hmm. if you look at the, the health wise, the statistics is showing is. It's pointing out obesity is increasing everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yes, everywhere. Pressure. So yeah. therefore, uh, for the migrant community, what I would want to say is, each individual has to become proactive with your life. Yes. If you want to live longer, you have to become proactive. Your doctor will not do it for you. I tell some people in the church, you, we can pray, we can pray, we can go to the pastor to pray, but guess what? The only way you, you are going to grow as a Christian mm -hmm. is to focus on the word of God, and your pastor is not going to do that for you. Mm -hmm. You are the one who have to go into the word and search it out. What is it that I need to grow? The same thing with food. Which food? My intention of eating. Why am I eating? Am I just eating to fill my stomach? Or am I really eating to build my body? So if I have those questions, if I can answer those questions, then I will know that, okay, my intention of eating this apple is this. Therefore, I'm going to eat the apple. So what particular advice are you giving to those, like the pastor made mention, yeah. that will go to work and come back very late? Yes. And they still need to eat. They have not eaten solid food, yeah. apart from maybe one slice of bread mm -hmm. in the morning, in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and in the evening, but they have come back. Mm -hmm. So what is your practical advice? Any of us, yeah, any of you can. I have a, what I might well, say, okay, let me yeah. just jump there and say, what I can say in that, in that case, it all boils down to planning. If you plan, if I wake up in the morning, for example, if I wake up in the morning, let me say I used to yes. go to work very early in the morning at yes. 5, mm -hmm. but I had already made a plan the previous day. I said, this is how my day runs. I walk from this hour to this hour. I make a plan. I have seen people in the workplace who made plans. They had their food ready. Yeah. They had rice, but they had vegetables, they had fruits. They put everything and they brought it to work. So they, they, if you don't make the plan, nobody is going to do it for you. So we are saying that even if you are doing that, be proactive in your life. Mm. You are going to work. It's not only bread. 
take some apple, take some whatever you can add there, mm -hmm. take it along with you. Those little things, they help. Yes. But you have to be proactive. Thank Nobody you. will do it for you. Yes. Yeah, okay. I, let me, I, I would just Thank uh, you so much. add a point to what's been said. Because I think that there is a consensus that uh, food is central to the issue of uh, living like healthily. But I think uh, the needs, we need to make one big distinction. That's a distinction between food and nutrition. Because uh, nutrition basically means like, what are you actually eating rather than, ra rather than just like eating. And awareness of the, nutritious, uh, of the nutritional value of lots of uh, food items is missing in a lot of the information that uh, we get. So if an effort is made to make people aware, it doesn't matter uh, what part of the social scale you're on, whether you're, you're poor with little income or you're well off, it's, uh, it, it doesn't really matter. But that central issue of food and nutrition is like central. Because with whatever resources you have, no matter what your income is, yeah. with the right knowledge, you know what you can get that's within your budget and will still be nutritious to yourself mm -hmm. and your family. Mm -hmm. But information about the nutritional value of different foods, we have to make this information available to people in our community so that people can make the right choices within their economic uh, capabilities. Thank you. I think that's very important. Thank you, sir. Can I react to this? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, interesting. You see, for me, I'm still on my point of uh, poverty contributing to this. Thing. See, nutritious food and food. There's a great difference here. Somebody can just get any ordinary food to fill his stomach just to get satisfied because she, he, don't have the money to go in for the nutritious food. Yeah. No. Uh, no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me, let me land. Yeah. Let me land. Yeah, land. Yes, because some people believe if I'm full, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. If I'm full, I can eat anything. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I remember years ago, some people were eating chicken, the legs, mm -hmm. only the legs. Mm -hmm. They sell it in the street market. They are mm -hmm. still selling, and people are buying them. Mm -hmm. It's not that they are delicious. Delicacy. It's because it's cheap for them. It's cheaper yeah. than the, the wings. It's yeah. cheaper than the, the, the real fresh. So if I don't have money to buy the good parts, I will resort to that legs. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, speak. yeah. And, 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 and that one is not healthy enough. Terrible. You understand? No. So I'm telling you, you it's... haven't been there, but I have been there. And I know people who beg to even have a, a, a one, 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 one food mm. and one meal in the whole day and they live in in <coughs> you understand <coughs> we are we are we are we are talking as if there's no reality in this situation reality, yeah. people are struggling people yeah. are suffering there are people who don't have jobs there are people who sleep on, on the street the street is what they are not documented people, they are not documented yeah, exactly. some of us seated here by god's grace some have degrees and have a, a wonderful job as my sister consultant would say, she work late and wake up 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Yeah. The poor person cannot hard. sleep till that 11 o'clock. She must wake up early in the morning and chase the metro hmm. to get something to do. Even the job she will get or he will get is just two hours. How can he get the nutritious food to eat, for Christ's sake? Okay, then. I think, no, hold on. I, I think I... I Let's think give them I, education, yeah. no, then. No, no, no. I need to, Let like, give uh, to the migrants education. Because I think uh, that is still missing the point. Because when you know the nutritional value of, like, different foods, mm. you know that with whatever amount you have in, in your hand, you know the best thing to buy. With yes. whatever it is you have. Yes. But you need to have that information about what is nutritious and what isn't. What can I buy with my limited resources that would actually give me enough energy to do whatever job I have to go and do? But you need to have that 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 knowledge. Mm. That, 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 simple. Yeah. Yeah. Let's ask. Let's ask. Yeah. You know, when you want to, it depends on the lifestyle you want to eat. That you are very rich does not mean that you live a healthy lifestyle. Uh, it depends on what you know 
and uh, what you want to eat. I think uh, Africans, especially Africans in the Netherlands, they are hard working. They are hard working anywhere you find them, they struggle to get something. Yeah. Where the problem lies on contentment. We are not contented with what we have. We strive to get more. We save a lot. You will see an African man, he wants to build a very big house back home. Yeah. He wants to uh, buy a very big car back home. He will be living, he, he will see what to eat, he will not buy it. Yeah. What is good for his body, he will not buy it because he is saving money so that by December he will go home Jesus. and live a very flamboyant uh, lifestyle. So what we have to, we are, we are living in a society where hmm. they, they are contented with what they have, they live they, they live uh, 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 just the way they see uh, every day comes the way they take it so if we if we develop that habit of uh, living like that at least we have to learn from them learn that uh, you, you you don't know tomorrow the money you are saving you don't know whether you are going to use it you don't know the houses you are going to build in the village some build houses and they don't go there you go there nobody stays in the in the house they have built years ago so um, I think uh, I will advise the Africans here to uh, take good care of themselves because what you eat is what makes you and that is what will keep you healthy. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Yeah, because of time, I think uh, it would be nice to, uh, because if we continue to deliberate on this, we will uh, have uh, different opinions, which is also good. But I think it would be nice that we give a practical, I would like us to mention just one. What is it that you want those who have listened to us to learn from this? What's the food that is so heavy that you may <coughs> encourage them not to take in the night? Yes? Yes? What's the food? Like if it is uh, the gari and the uh, goosey soup, which is uh, from from us. <laughs> I think uh, actually, actually, actually uh, Yeah, from Nigeria, like from me. The, I'm from Nigeria, I'm speaking Nigeria. Miss. So, from... <laughs> From uh, my own tribe, maybe they would like a goose with okaze soup <laughs> yeah. late in the night. So I think we don't need to eat that. It's, it's, it's you know, we don't need to eat that okaze soup and uh, and uh, and um, <laughs> and uh, what do you call it? The gare. Probably you can you can at actually lick the soup, but then you don't eat the fufu. Yeah, but no, the, 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 it's all about. Uh, I'm talking like about from Nigeria, yeah, so you have to say your own. My from own is my own is. Uh, <laughs> Ga Nigeria or Ghana, everything is based on the carbohydrate. Yeah. The, the carbohydrate in the food that we take is also part of the problems. Yeah. And uh, if you are from Nigeria, your gari is carbohydrate. If I'm from Ghana, my gari is also carbohydrate. Or my fufu is carbohydrate. So you have to know the content of what we take in. Mm. And what time. Yeah. And also what time. Yeah, exactly. You know? mm -hmm. Because if I don't eat fufu in the evening, I haven't eaten, that mindset needs to be changed. Yeah. Mm. That's all. There are some of the people, they go to the meeting, their meetings. I, I went to a meeting, uh, <laughs> a town meeting the other time. You know, I just brow, I just, you know, say, let me go and see these people. Behold, what they gave me, I couldn't believe. They had packed dry meat, real dry. I, I feel it in one big <laughs> container for me. and feel another one for my husband, you know. And this was about after nine. And they were munching this thing and <laughs> drinking their beer and taking their kind of fun at such a very odd time, you know. So I went to talk about healthy lifestyle and they are telling me they were dancing. They're going to dance out all of this within a twinkle of an eye. So, is that a... Is, <laughs> you do understand? So, discipline too, because uh, yes. like uh, I will say that uh, even if they pack that food, there was a time when I did my master's, I was determined that time to come down. Yeah. And uh, even if I had the uh, meat, as you say, I could only eat one, one piece of uh, meat. Yeah. And when you eat it, you'll be okay. So when they give it to you like that and you want to consume it because you, uh, they have given it to you, that is where it uh, is very bad. And also our men. Because when I, I really slimmed down, 2010, yeah. yeah, I was really down. So when I got home, when I traveled, my husband was not happy. 
he looked at me and said, are you well? <laughs> yeah. I said, yes. He said, no, no. People will think you are suffering over there. So I, and I started looking at myself in the mirror. I said, am I really okay? Because I started feeling somehow. I had to stay home one week in order to at least get myself before I started going. And again. eat more. So, yeah, so, <laughs> that is the mindset. That is the yeah, mindset. Sure, yeah. Yes. You know, me, as, as I'm saying, like me, I was before I was a very huge or fat woman i went to ghana with this and my auntie said are, are you okay <laughs> what is happening there i said what he said are you okay because you look so thin what's wrong with you and i was like jesus what is going on so our mindset is yeah. i keep on that saying have I, I have to be fat <laughs> and i told my auntie i'm okay he said no then she called my cousin look at her she looks so, mm. <laughs> so they should come and ask me whether i'm sick if I have a problem, I have to come and tell them. <laughs> and I was laughing and she... So, you know, it's our mindset. I, I always have a ready answer for, for also my mother-in-law and my relatives and also my own classmates. Mm -hmm. We finished together, but obviously they stayed in Uganda. And once you begin to earn money, as students, we are poor and so we didn't eat much. So my ready answer is always, I look like this because I want to live to be 90. Oh. And that always ends the conversation because say, if I want to be 90, I can't look like that. Mm -hmm. And that always, uh, it, so it's by choice. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's hear from the gentleman behind so we can round up, please. What is your, let's start from uh, uh, the, the pastor, please. What is your candid uh, advice before we sign up? Hello, I have, One minute, as, as I've said before, it's good to go for a checkup so that we shall have knowledge of our, our health. Thank you. Check up. Thank you. Mm. That is a mentality from Africa as yeah. well. Check up is, uh, is very important also, I, I will add, because you don't know what is going on inside your body. So you have to go. And also, you have to don't eat, don't eat late and you have to do exercise, not like going to gym. Mm. Sometimes you can walk in the park or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just, um, move a little bit mm. <laughs> so so, so when they come back from work very late and they've not eaten and then the five o'clock they are rushing again to go and take the metro you are telling them that that is your, your practical way they don't eat no i'm telling them uh, during the weekend when they are free <laughs> so after they wake up uh, in the morning so that they can Issues. walk a little bit around uh, the corner so. <laughs> <laughs> thank you sir <laughs> uh, don't eat too much <coughs> Discipline is important, and we have to change our mentality. You have to change our behavior. I always, I, I always say that yeah, for a man, African man, a big woman is the best one. <laughs> and we have to change, change our mentality. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know this oh man. Oh my God! You don't know this man. What do you mean by a big woman? <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, know, you see, we are we are men. <laughs> yeah, I, I am talking about uh, yeah, who I, yeah, yeah. I come from Rwanda. I come from Africa. When we are too small, too small, you see, it's too difficult to yeah to feel something. Huh? To feel something. No, say some of say some of the men in Africa. Don't, yeah. don't generalize. And sometimes when we are too small, you know, maybe they will think that you have AIDS. How oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's oh, you have oh, yes. really? Yeah. 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 Yes. You see? Yeah, it's in our mind. Mind. <laughs> it's be better to have to have a big uh, fat flower uh, woman. <laughs> <laughs> we have to change the mentality. We have to change our mind. Uh, <laughs> 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 but, but most of the Rwandans I have seen, they are always so slim. Uh, yeah, they're so slim. That's why they are here. Yeah. I think Ghanaians and Nigerians have it too. That you don't have to search for your woman in the in if you put the light off. <laughs> 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 She has to be very big yeah, I and feel the bed. <laughs> That's the mentality. Yeah. 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 Well, what I want to add about the food issue is uh, uh, the Bible made it clear we have to avoid the sin of gluttony, eating too much. We have to eat later every time. Uh, also, exercise, you don't have to only go outside. When the weather is bad, you can do your bicycle in your bed. 
Uh, with your leg, you know. Yeah, sure. Dutch, Dutch people does it. You cycle in your bed. And uh, do not sit more than one hour on your coach or anywhere without moving around. Okay, that, that's, that's good. That's very important thing. Mm -hmm. um, something we did not mention here yet, but I think it's very, very important. Even if you go to Genesis 1, is there. Walk. Find a walk to do. Even if it is voluntary, mm. if you cannot get a job, get busy. Get busy. Just mm. find something to do. It helps your men, men, spiritual and mental growth, mm. but also your body being useful to somebody mm -hmm. or to something. And like we talk of poverty is really a terrible uh, is, touching yeah. something. Yeah. But if you have money, money give, raise a kind of hormone in your body that makes you healthy. <laughs> you know, really. yeah. When you, as a man, if you have money, you get a kind of hormone as if women have been doing their pregnant. You know, it gives you hormone that makes you feel good. Even the you know? Bible says money answered all things. Yeah, exactly. So money, so is, money good. is very important for healthy, healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Uh, well, let me add this. Uh, we did not touch on this, uh, our medication, how we administer medication and things like that. As a community leader, I've seen most of my people, the appearance send medicine, local herbs, for them to cure particular uh, ailment or sickness. <laughs> and they combine it with what the prescription from their house doctor. And that is very, very dangerous. Yes, exactly. See? So we, we should refrain from that. If you want to continue with the traditional medicine, it's your choice. And if you want to continue with what the doctors have prescribed, it's also a choice. But to combine the two, it will kill you. Because I have seen somebody died uh, at my watch. You know, I took him home. And he died after 10 days. Mm. Because he combined these two medicines together. Mm. And Jesus. what we saw, yeah, the belly swelled up. Oh. And it was like a terrible, terrible uh, situation everybody needs to avoid you know so that's my advice if you are on medication concentrate on what your gp has prescribed yeah don't add what your mother or your in-law has sent from ghana mm -hmm. to you. that's my advice thank you thank you so much yeah i think um the, my advice would be uh, you know to watch what we eat and have a good balance between uh yeah, uh, what we eat, a bit of exercise, because we all, we all, we all need it. We all, it, it doesn't matter like uh, what we do for a living. These are basic things that uh, everyone needs. And also, we should listen always <coughs> to the signs uh, that our body is like giving us. We should never ignore any signs our body is giving us. Because those signs are an indication that something is wrong. And if we don't tackle them right away, then they can, yeah, they can easily lead to uh, much worse uh, problems uh, down the road. Mm. That's uh, my advice. Thank you, President. Thank you. Yes, um, uh, you've spoken, isn't it? Yeah. No, I'm, we are running up, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. All that I'm saying is uh, our mindset. We have to set our mind. Eat a little. And then uh, don't, we don't have to eat late. And then too much carbohydrate, that's our starch, fufu, gari, and all those things. So that's all our advice. And also, as my brother was saying, listening to our body, every sign that our body gives us, we have to take it serious. Go to our house doctor, don't think too much about the acne risiko. We have no choice than to pay. So we have to really listen to our body, and then uh, we'll live for long. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Molly. Um, I would like to conclude by saying that uh, for each and every one individual, find something, a challenge, a lifestyle challenge, be it exercise, something that you have been struggling to put into practice. Start with one and uh, practice it. Have the discipline and the patience to do it daily until you see a result, if it is eating vegetables or fruit. And then... Um, convince yourself once you have succeeded with one it will be easier to succeed with the others so just have that discipline 
to do it daily until it becomes a reality of your life. And then everything else will be easier as you try it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doc. Uh, yeah, I would like to uh, conclude by advice in that uh, whatever you decide to do, find someone to hold you accountable. Because there are some things that you may try to do all by yourself, but you will not be able, you will not be able to challenge yourself to go through with it. But when there's someone to hold you accountable, I think you'll be able to, to pursue that goal to, to its end. So find someone around you, a friend, a colleague who can tell you, hey, hey did you do that? You, mm. We said you were going to do this. It is 9 o'clock. I've not seen you do it. Have you done it? So when you have someone to hold you accountable, you can actually achieve these little goals that you set for yourself. Mm. So when you come back from your work at a very odd time and you are munching your fufu, the guy, the person is there holding you accountable? Yeah, when you're a single mother or you're a single <laughs> Okay, if you are a single for example, if you are a single if you are a single if you're a single mother, like I said before, one you have to be proactive, you have to be intentional in what you're doing. Yeah. If you are intentional in what you're doing, even if you come late home, mm. there is a way if you had planned your day a day before, mm. you would know that even if I come late, this is what I had planned. So it is difficult to go outside that plan. But if you, even the Bible says this, you make your plan, bring it before me, and I'll direct your path. Mm -hmm. So says God. And therefore, in every little thing, even your food, you take time to plan your food. Okay. You will come to a place where you know that, you know what, I made a plan. I know my schedule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know when I come back from work. So yeah. if I had made, made plans, I would be able to stick to it. But well, without plans, then you land home at 11, you go to the kitchen, you look for your fufu, mm -hmm. and you eat. But if you have plans already, you yes. know that, okay, I'm coming late at this time, so let me make sure that maybe I'm eating at 8, or when I have my break during mm -hmm. my work time, I'm eating this heavy meal. When I come <laughs> back, I take a cup of water, maybe mm -hmm. a cup of tea, mm -hmm. and I go to bed. Okay. But without those plans, there is no way. Nobody is going to do it for you. You have to be proactive. So in other words, you are saying to our audience, those who are going to listen and those who are listening, that it's very important to make plans. Even, even when you do not know how to write, you can still make the plan in your head. You know, and execute it somehow. It's possible. Well, because some people are not used to making plans anyway. Yeah. So what we are bringing through this uh, channel now is that they must make plans. It's very necessary if they are supposed to live long. Is that? Mm -hmm. Okay, because let's hear you. mothers who didn't go to school, they had plans. Yeah. yeah. They, they planned they said their common sense, They said common sense is not common. The mothers were very wise. They yeah. didn't go to school, but they had all these plans. Common sense. Yes. yes, it's true. And there is a film called The Sugar Man. Mm -hmm. It's very recent. It says about the Western way of life and what causes all this kind of sickness. Okay. It says something to watch, The Sugar Man. Mm -hmm. The Sugar Man. The Sugar Man. Uh, I yes. will conclude uh, with four yes. points. Uh, one is uh, make sure you drink enough water yes. daily uh, and uh, cleanliness. Make sure you have a clean environment. And uh, also, don't sleep with your heater on. Most Africans, they feel so cold that uh, they leave the heater on uh, at night. Please make sure before you go to bed, you off your heater. The heating system and always open your windows even if it's once in a day 10 minutes or 20 minutes make sure there is cross ventilation and finally don't forget to pray because uh, we believe in that and it's it works for us <laughs> yes it's true nice <laughs> awesome 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 thank you so much thank you thank you thank you and uh, i believe that uh, Audience who have listened to us, you have been blessed and uh, you will continue to be blessed. Uh, these are our leaders in the community and uh, they have poured out their sincere heart to us. So what do we do is just to what, apply ourselves to doing what is right. You've gotten wisdom and the Bible tells us where there is no wisdom, people perish. Because of no vision also, people perish. So now you have wisdom, you have also uh, gotten the knowledge. So do not perish anymore. So we pray that the Lord will help you to um, maintain or to, to, to work towards improving uh, your, your lifestyle so that you can live healthy. God richly bless you and we hope to see you again and again. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for being with us. Every one of you. God bless you.